Welcome to this lecture on gross income. So, gross income is basically a definition that you can find in section 1 of the VAT Act. And it is probably the most important definition in the Act that you can find. The reason for this is because gross income is the section that tells us for the most part, for the majority of transactions or events that take place, what amounts need to be included in our gross income. And if it's included in our gross income, it basically means what amounts are we going to potentially tax. So, that is why when we do calculations, and we're all used to doing calculations for, like, let's say, a company where you have sales and interest received and dividends received, and you have all of these amounts that you include. Most of those amounts that you include in there all comes from the gross income definition. When you're an individual, your salary, when you include your salary, why do you not include if your grandma gives you birthday money? Why do you not include that in your tax return? All of that comes from the gross income definition. It tells us what to include and what to not include. So, very, very, very important definition. So, how, um, how does it pop up? It pops up in various ways in tests and exams. It can either be asked as a discussion type of question. So, here's an event. Is it discussed within our gross income? So, this is something that you would have to do to illustrate that you understand the theory behind it and that you would be able to give someone advice. To say, if someone comes to you and says, look, listen, I'm going to sell this thing. Is it going to be gross income? You can help them. The other way they test it, and this is by far the most common, is by just giving you amounts when you're doing calculations. Every single time, like I just showed you, when you include an amount in your calculation, you're actually applying the gross income definition. Right, so... Let's talk. Section 1 gives us a definition of the term income, not gross income, just income. And it says income is defined as the gross income less your exempt income. So gross income is discussed in section 1 and exempt income is discussed in section 10. In simple terms, exempt income are amounts of gross income which they've des deliberately said we do not want to tax. So it is exempt from tax or part thereof. So, if you see the word income, and if you hear us talking about income, we're basically referring to gross income, less exempt income. So, the tax framework. Very high level, very simplistic representation here, but this is how we calculate taxable income. We say gross income, less exempt income, gives us income. Then we deduct all sorts of deductions from this. There are different types of deductions. We include other inclusions, so things which are not maybe gross income, but which the Act specifically tells us to include, like allowances. We add any taxable capital gains. We deduct any donations made to public benefit organizations. This is not donations tax, and that gives us taxable income. Right, so this is just this tax framework. We will refer to this, and you'll see this a lot in your studies, and you have seen it also in the past. Our focus here will now be on gross income and exempt income. So gross income. As I've mentioned to you guys before, it's a very important section and you must test all of the receipts you get in questions against the gross income formula, even if they don't specifically ask you. This is how they test it the whole time. They'll say to you, um, Mr. X was involved in a motor vehicle accident when a drunk driver drove into him. The drunk driver had to compensate him and pay him a million rands in compensation for the injuries caused. And they'll put it in a question. They won't even specifically maybe say to you, discuss it in length. You will have to just apply in your head immediately and go, okay, this is gross income. Let me run through the definition and you'll have to apply it. Okay, so gross income, guys, applies to two, there's two distinct situations. It applies to residents, which is what we'll focus on in these, uh, this lecture, and to non-residents, which is a separate lecture. There are also things included in the gross income definition called special inclusions to gross income. So basically what this is, this is a list of items which they've given to us, which they said it doesn't matter whether or not this meets the requirements of the gross income definition, if you see this amount, you must include it in your gross income. So it's amounts which I want to tax, uh, or want to tax, not attack, tax against all odds, basically, against they want to do it. So, for example, you'll see that there are things in there like annuities. If you receive an annuity, you must include it in your gross income. It is immediately taxable. Things like 
uh, dividends that you've received. There's a whole bunch of them, right, which you'll find in the section one definition. So, guys, what should you be able to do? So, students should be able to discuss and gross income in detail and refer to case law. And when I make this comment here about case law, I want you to just understand. I'll also, also add it to your slide here. What I want you to understand is you do not need to name the cases. The principles are important. And this is per your Saika ITC exam pronouncements. So, because your Saika ITC exam pronouncement tells you you're not expected to be a tax expert when you are done with CTA, they've made a decision that the case names so you will not need to be tested. You'll see I've included it for you guys because it just gives us a bit of a reference point but the principles around that will be important. Now, before I talk and continue with it, what is case law in case you're not aware? What is the, case, what is the situation around case law? Now, remember, we are studying an act. So, people write the act and then they publish the act. The government, was the, uh, the president signs off on it and the act is published. Then, at some point, maybe years after it was written, whatever the case may be, maybe immediately, who knows, Someone will do something in terms of the act, they'll read the act, and they'll say, this is how I interpret the act. So they'll do something, and then SARS will say, we do not agree with you, we interpret it in a different way, and it might end up in court. So the courts then have to decide and say, this is what the act says, let's interpret and decide what this means. So court cases, there's been cases, case law court cases, that have taken place, many of them over the years for tax, where someone will be challenged by SARS and then the courts have to decide, okay, this is what the act says and this is what it means. So, what you have to study here, as you'll see, the gross income definition is short, but there's lots of theory around it because there's lots of principles that have been established. So, gross income definition, let's talk about it. We will focus on the definition of residence, gross income for residence at this point in time. And here is the definition. I've broken it down into bullet points and simplified it slightly, but you can find it in section 1. The definition says, In relation to any year of assessment, the total amount in cash or otherwise received by or accrued to a resident, excluding items that are capital in nature. And that's something that you basically I would like you to memorize. Whenever you write a question, you uh, a discussion question you will always state this right please remember that guys please always state the definition in discussion questions all of these words that have been, or phrases which have been highlighted or bolded in different colors, all of these will be discussions that we are going to have and which you need to be able to discuss. Because they are going to give you situations where one or more of these items are not met. Because this whole definition must be complied with. So, they might give you something where an amount has not been received and you have to discuss whether or not it's accrued. They will give you amounts most popular which are capital in nature and you have to argue why it's capital or not capital in nature. Now what I want you to also see here guys when you look at the gross income definition is can you see that nowhere in this definition does it refer to the location of income or the source of income. So they're not saying in relation to a year of assessment total amount in cash otherwise received by a resident in South Africa excluding capital in nature. They don't say something like in South Africa or in Africa, or whatever the case. So what does that mean? That means this applies to, if you're a resident, any amount of income that you receive, gross income, anywhere in the world. So if I'm a South African resident and I sell hot dogs at 
a soccer match, I will have to include it in my gross income. If I am a South African resident and I get on a plane and I fly to America and I say for the next five months I'm going to sell hot dogs in New York, I will also have to include it in my South African gross income. Okay, so it doesn't matter where you earn it. As long as you're a resident, you get taxed on your worldwide income. And that's what they basically always call it. So now we'll start looking at the various elements. So the first element was the year of assessment. So, year of assessment, guys, it basically just means you have to include the gross income in the year which it took place. Now, remember, for natural persons and trusts, your tax year runs from the 1st of March until the end of February. So, it will be from the 1st of March 2023 to the 28th of February 2024, or whatever date. Right, just a random example, but March until February. They don't have to tell you that, you need to know it. For non-natural persons, and these are basically companies, it's the most important one for you, it is the financial year end. So if their tax year runs from January until December, then your tax year also runs from January until December. Right, whatever date it might be. The next part of the definition, so it's said for the year, during the year of assessment, the total amount in cash or otherwise. Basically what this means is, whether or not you receive amounts in cash, or if someone pays you in something that is not cash, you need to include it in your gross income. Otherwise, this would be a way for you to avoid gross income. So, I sell you a pair of shoes and you give me a cow in return. Okay, now it's a crazy example. Some crazy expensive shoes, those clearly. But you will still be taxed. I will still be taxed even though I didn't receive money but I received a cow. Right. Very, very, very important to understand that it's cash or otherwise. But now, in general, the rule is that you must use the market value of the asset that you've received. But now, there was a court case, the Butcher Brothers case, and again guys, the principle is important. The principle from this case said that the uh, an amount, so the total amount in that phrase, must have an ascertainable money value. Now guys, I'm not expect you to remember that ascertainable is obviously um, a more obscure word. Ascertainable means you need to be able to determine the money value. So you can say amount means it must have a money value. What does this mean? It means that if I, give, if, you, if I sell you a pair of shoes and you give me something else which is not money, that thing that you give me, I must be able to give you, I must be able to put money to it. A value to it, a money value to it. So I must be able to say that cow is worth 10,000 rands. If I can't do it, then it can't be gross income. So, for example, let's say I sell you a pair of shoes and in return you just promise to be my lifelong friend, and that's the agreement that we have. How much value can I put on you? What is the money value of you being my friend? Can't put that down. It's impossible to determine it. So, if you have some weird situation like that, which is obviously very rare then obviously there cannot be gross income around that. 